All right, so how's it going, everyone? I've been seeing a couple of these autograph, I guess, through the mail type videos. So people are asking, what the heck do you do to get some cards or stuff back through the mail? So I figured, why not give it a try? Also, where did my hair go? <laughs> uh, if you've probably been following me over the years, you know I've had, uh, I guess, longer hair but not super long, but this is definitely in all my life the shortest I've ever had my hair. And I figured, why not try it out? I don't know, it's kinda nice, doesn't ever get in my eyes and stuff, so who knows, maybe a little bit longer. I don't really want it this short. Yeah, I've only been doing this a few months now, I think started last February. Yeah, I think around then. Around February, because I started sending out some cards to baseball spring training here. I mean, I guess I'm successful. I mean, I don't know, even though I haven't been doing this much, I mean, we're, get, we're getting stuff back. We got, I got a few built up. And also my camera is on low battery. New battery, hopefully this lasts longer. I don't know why this does this every time I start recording something, the first battery is always running out. But yes, I'm gonna show you what to do. I guess kind of any sports and yeah, just send stuff through the mail. It's pretty simple once you figure it out, I think. I mean, I know I've watched some other YouTube people, I guess it would be for like baseball cards and sports cards and some celebrity stuff and kind of pulled ideas from uh, each of them and doing whatever I do now. So I guess it works. <laughs> like, like I said, I've been getting some things back. I know I haven't been doing this a while and don't really, I guess it's gonna be like a tutorial guide how to kind of video thing. And usually it's something I know a lot about but I feel like this is kind of straightforward once you do it a few times and I guess get the right addresses and you get stuff back. So yeah, I'm gonna show you exactly what I do. Yeah, I figured a quick little rundown. I don't wanna to go too far into this binder, but yeah, so far we are, uh, I, I mean, I'd say this is pretty successful myself. I haven't really counted. I definitely know we're over a hundred something. Don't wanna to go too far into this because some of these are from stunt videos I have up uploaded but haven't like published yet so yeah we're definitely getting some things back and let's see how as you can see we've kind of done all the sports pretty much I think I have a basketball card somewhere but we've done basketball we've done hockey baseball football a couple celebrities from TV shows I like and all it is is you gotta find a card, preferably, that's the simplest thing, but a card, index card. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to do the eight by tens and just get one of these smaller envelopes, put it in a bigger envelope and mail it out. And I've kind of gotten some ideas from, I mean, there are channels you guys all probably watch. Mike O, Troy Rudder, I think is how you say his name. Card Cutter, those are like the three main, I guess, TTM, I think kind of style people uh, followed and they've I'll link them in the description of the video and they've all done their kind of explanations on how they do it and that's I kind of just ideas from all of it and then just started sending stuff out so I'm going to show you how to do this so envelopes you're going to need are these bigger envelopes I believe they're just number 10 envelopes the box say this says they're 4.13 inches by nine and a half inches. And then, oh, and then the little envelopes, number six and three quarters, 3.63 inches by 6.5 inches. I don't really think that matters as long as you got a smaller envelope that goes in the bigger envelope. Now, key thing, stamps. This is actually funny enough probably the most expensive part of this because for all of these are $50, I believe. So yeah, don't want to waste these if you can, if you can help it, but make sure you're putting a stamp on each envelope. Make sure you're putting two stamps uh, for one letter that you're sending out or whatever. So yeah, you're going to put a stamp on the little one and a stamp on the big one. What I did, I went on eBay and it was a couple of dollars and I got way too many of them. Uh, address labels. This is super simple. If you're doing like, just like a couple of these, just to try it or whatever, just handwrite it. That's what I started doing. I was just handwriting them out, like uh, my address. And I, some people I've seen said uh, 
just write it here in the middle, your address, name and address and everything. But I always do both in both corners. Sometimes I have gotten them where, especially with the address labels thing, one of them is kind of torn up and stuff and I had the second one on it. So hopefully that helped that get back. So you're gonna put on the smaller envelope your address basically. P.O. Box, address, home address, I'm using P.O. Box. So then basically the person is just gonna put whatever you have back in here and then just send it out. And I like using the sticky label ones, like the peel label, because I feel like maybe the person doesn't really wanna lick some <laughs> foreign envelope that came to them. So yeah, small envelope's gonna have both your address on it. And on the big one, stamp, <laughs> and then your address up in the top corner. Then here in the middle, wherever you are sending it out, whatever sport, celebrity, anything you wanna to send to, their address goes here. So say we want uh, this guy, Shohei Otani, great baseball player. I don't wanna pay $15,000 for his autograph. I don't like, I don't $15,000 like the guy. But I mean, this is never, that's like some of the bigger name players. For basically all of these, you're, you have to assume you are never gonna get this back. So do not send something valuable. Some people, I'd say you could maybe, but there's still always a good chance that you're not getting back. But some play, people have a better chance, you know? Uh, if it's like a person that you see a lot of people get back. That's happened with me and I haven't got my stuff back, but luckily it's just a dollar card or whatever, you know? So don't be use, use anything expensive. Like, I mean, you could try it, but don't be mad when you don't get it, you know? So yeah, you're gonna pick who you're gonna send it to and I'm gonna show you how to find that. All right, so you got your player, I guess it would be for this part. Celebrities, I'm not entirely sure, but there's a couple ways of doing this. There, actually there's, a few of these websites and the so sports card forum is the main website i use for all this and i think i could show this page because it doesn't really reveal anything but if I click anywhere else it's going to be showing addresses and stuff and that's pretty much the whole point of registering with the website or whatever but yeah like i said it's free and then uh you'd see here if someone gets something back you could see all the people i mean it's dependent on people updating it and stuff you know but you can see what people have been sending out to it like keeps track of it you can add people it's got some interesting statistics Top 25 people in hockey stuff's got back you can see all the different sports and they have other sports non-sports soccer racing golf i need to do a couple golf that'd be kind of cool but yeah that's what i use it for and i like it but it's really nice to just kind of keep track of everything and that's kind of cool too and also i do use a like a microsoft excel kind of page thing and then I just after I get something back I go in and add it to uh, this for someone who doesn't have an address on it that's pretty much what I use the Excel for and then if it is real like if I do get something back from it then I update it to this I don't want to put like a address and other people send to it and it be wrong or something like that but I have put in a couple and it's kind of cool seeing a bunch of other people getting stuff back from it. There's another website called sportscollectors.net and that's a, I think a lot of the people that like do the YouTube TTM thing, I think a lot of them use that and that one, I think it's like $15 a year or something. And I just did it to try it, uh, see what it is. And to me, it's kind of the same addresses, but for a lot of, I mean like a lot of players, you're just sending it to the stadium and like current players you're just sending it to whatever stadium they're going to be play or what whatever you know so those addresses you don't really need you just find what team they're on which i'm going to show you on this page but uh i think that is more that website is actually a lot better for the sportscollectors.net one is a lot better for like retired players and stuff and home addresses that kind of thing so however people find that stuff i don't know um but yeah, that's what, the, what I guess is really the difference is that I've come out for. And that website also has the same kind of keep track and everything like that. But for me, I like the sports card forum one and that's what I've been using. In this case, it's baseball. That's mostly what I've been interested in and trying to get some autographs and stuff back. And I've kind of actually, I can see myself moving more into like the minor league kind of guys because 
I guessing what I'm starting to realize kind of is like maybe since because these guys are it's the, basically the very start of their career or even before that because I mean they're not really in like the major league I guess kind of deal so they're not I guess not really getting bombarded with uh mail and stuff maybe like some of the higher name I mean I like I got Juan Soto um at the time he wasn't a really big prospect kind of like developed into like halfway through the year when uh I was sending and stuff like, like Royce Lewis. He was a big, he's a pretty big name, but he's actually really good at returning stuff. So that's actually kind of cool. Some of the guys are, some of the guys aren't, you know, but whatever. Uh, in this case, we're going to be doing minor league baseball. And this also will cover like major league guys also. So basically all baseball. Yeah. M I L B dot com. Minor league baseball dot com, I guess it would be. So, yeah, you're just gonna pick out uh, whoever you're gonna like. We were just doing Shohei Otani, but that'd be a, a bad. I had a card. Is it Gavin Lux? I think I'm gonna try him next year. So you could type in Gavin, pops up. A lot of people with the name Gavin or Gavin in their name. Is it Tachini? Tachini? Actually, St. Lucie. I might be able to get him next year if he's there uh, in person because that's like 20 minutes away from me. Um, Gavin Lux. We're gonna try him. So there he is pull up his name so this is just gonna tell you where he is sometimes now it's not completely updated um, but I just use this as a good way to kind of get an idea of where where the heck you're looking so Gavin Lux he's playing on the Tulsa drillers and up here you can see he's in the double a Texas League and they play for the Dodgers so I guess during spring training you could send the card to uh, wherever the Dodgers play, which I'll find that. That's a little bit different because it's not in LA. <laughs> but also you can go down here and I'll kind of give you an update. Of, I don't know who updates this, so it's kind of up to them or whatever, but you can see it's assigned Tulsa drill Drillers from Rancho Cucamonga Quakes. <laughs> so it'll kind of tell you where they're at and when. So uh, he could not be there now, but I mean, it's the off season, so he's not. But you just kind of have to look. And another good way to do it, some of them will have a Twitter and you go to their Twitter and you can kind of, if they actually update their Twitter, a lot of the guys don't, they have like a hundred tweets over like five years or something. Yeah. You can see if they're like actually tweeting that they're like playing on the team and whatnot like that. And actually Twitter of a lot of players, celebrities, anyone, good way to get an idea of where they're going to be or where they're at, you know, but like the celebrity, uh, when I was looking at the Gotham one, I was waiting to see when they were start. Uh, I sent to Aaron Richards. I was waiting for her to uh, kind of be like, oh, we're starting to film, uh, I think it was season five, season six or whatever. So then I sent the cards to the studio where they film that season and then I got it back, you know? So like, kind of like that. Twitter's a good thing like that. Uh, Instagram also, I guess you could probably try and message some of the people um, if they have, hey, you have a not home address thing, not like a private address or something like that, you know? to uh, where I could send you some fan mail or something like that, you know? Maybe they respond, maybe they don't. But yeah, so we're gonna send to Gavin Lux. And where is Gavin Lux? So Tulsa Drillers, we'll go to Tulsa Drillers. Okay, so now we're on the Tulsa Drillers website, minor league website. And I, I think for the most part, these websites are, and the baseball ones are set up pretty similarly. And yeah, you can find, you go where? Um, team, go to team roster see this should be pretty updated for all the teams um right here gavin lux okay he's on the team he's active it'll say some of them if they're injured or whatnot so he's on the team as of now but we know he's not because it's off season but i think for this purpose he's on the team so then you go over here. Sometimes they hide this. Hard to find, and you kind of have to like Google Maps search where they're at. Like so, right here, Tulsa Drillers front office. But also, sometimes I'll do. What is their contact? It's the same thing. Um, it's called one OK, one OK, one OK, one. That field, and I guess same thing. Now, some of these will have, is this one not gonna be one that shows it? Sometimes they have like a thing for mail and it'll say, 
Some of them have a P.O. box for the stadium. I kind of feel like they're not too good on getting to their P.O. box for whoever works at the stadium or whatever. So I like kind of sending to the stadium. So you kind of want to make sure where that, that address is the stadium and like make sure like the office across town or not even close, you know? So hopefully that is the address for the stadium. So you'd write this on the envelope and then in the middle, and then you'd write K, like C slash O care of um, Gavin Lux, Tulsa Drillers. I'd like to put one OK field, whatever that is, underneath Tulsa Drillers. Or you could just write Gavin Lux care of Tulsa Drillers, then one OK field, and then the 201 that, and then that address under that. They have an idea of who the heck it's going to, you know? Some people do it differently. There's like attention, like Gavin Lux, stuff like that. I don't, honestly, don't think that really matters, but. For the most part, just know, have player, person, then the team. Then I like putting the stadium, I guess. Don't have to, but just so, you know, like that. But then I guess I figure show a little bit of football. I think it was Tyrod Taylor I just recently sent out. And I thought it was kind of confusing to find it, but I just went through it really quick, and this is a super easy address to find for Cleveland Browns. Just go here and contact us <laughs> and as you see so like that's the training facility thing also I, I definitely google maps any address before you send it to make sure um it is you know where you want to send it like this i would put this address search it into maps and make sure okay that's definitely the stadium address. You don't want to send it to like an office or something that's not part of the stadium at least. But yeah, that'd be the, where I'd sent it to for Tyrod Taylor. And then uh, this would probably, I mean, I think I've seen for football, some people get it back from like their training facilities, but I believe it's mostly for the month or so before the season starts when players are like working out and stuff, it's kind of like their spring training, I guess it would be. Generally, all the sports websites are fairly similar. Um, I don't remember, I think I only did Dallas Mavericks for basketball, so uh, I'm pretty sure that's the only one I've sent out for basketball. But yeah, all the websites should be the same. Similar, not the same. Uh, and you're just like looking for addresses and stuff. And then I was saying about Spring training, uh, I one off the top of my head, I remember uh, Cincinnati Reds. So you may be able, like, well, if you're gonna go try and find Cincinnati Reds, Great American Ballpark, ballpark information. Sometimes they'll have it. Some some teams will have it set up, and it'll just have their address. This, I guess, you gotta do a little bit of getting to the ballpark. Are you, yeah, right there. Great American Ballpark. Sometimes I won't have it and it'll just be like, you have to follow like road directions and then use that into like Google maps and to get like an address kind of deal like that. But this had it right there. Also another one I use is uh, like there A to Z, almost all teams have it. And you just do control F, um, mail. That perfect, perfect. This is all coming out beautiful. I did not check this beforehand. Let's see here, fan mail. Fan mail that be sent. Manager, player, coach's name, care of, Reds, ballpark, that, that. Yeah, that's a key part. This is not guaranteed. But yeah, that's pretty cool they have that. And then I was gonna show about spring training. All I do is type in the team name and then spring training because sometimes they're a little different. This, they would be playing in Arizona. Oh, this actually, I'm pretty sure it works. Oh, dude, this is perfect. Okay, see? So, yeah. I guess you could find it on the Cincinnati Reds website, but I don't think all teams actually. But here, you can see the ballpark information, and they play in Goodyear Ballpark in Arizona. And then they also put all Reds mail is to be sent to the player development complex, which I do know that. A couple cards and stuff to that. But then also, there are 
mostly I think this is kind of like a minor league stadium so there'll also be teams playing in that ballpark so if there's a team there um, you would send to there then Roger Dean Stadium this is for spring training it's Cardinals and Marlins which I go all this where I might even be in the picture who's playing that could be me right there no I don't think I have a black hat I don't know no that's behind my own plate I'd be over here somewhere it's where we sit and then my other buddy has tickets for spring training and he's right here for Cardinals it's pretty amazing but anyway um yeah spring training you send here and also there's Jupiter Hammerheads and Palm Beach Cardinals minor league teams that go there I've seen some people get some stuff back from there um I've been extremely unsuccessful with Marlins uh, I think I've only got a couple back and kind of disappointing that my favorite team I can't really get any stuff back from but I mean we did get Brad Ziegler but I'm pretty sure everyone gets Brad Ziegler because he's really good but I guess I saw he's recently retired so there goes that I guess but here this would be the address for it and then right here they're telling you if you're sending player mail how to do it so that's pretty cool and sometimes for celebrities I literally just type in their name and then fan mail and I guess there's this website fanmail.biz it's kind of like another kind of forum thing and here I actually sent to Kerry Payton if he's on The Walking Dead I recognize him pretty funny character and this address is totally wrong I, I think maybe I don't know it's definitely old but uh, you can see someone got something back in January but on sports card forum I saw a different address and several people just got stuff signed by him from a different address so I don't know um, I sent him an 8x10 and stuff so we'll, we shall see if I ever get that back from this address yeah, that's kind of what I just do for celebrities so and also that sports card forum has celebrities it's got all the sports on sports and stuff like that pretty cool but yeah that's kind of I kind of bounce in between them you know to try and narrow it down so that's what I did for the addresses that's what you can do too okay so now you have your address like I said where you're sending it like player name celebrity name whatever team name building name if it's not as not a team and like stadium building name under that and then the address and then your address up there then a stamp key part and on the other smaller envelope your address your address stamp stamp key part so now what do you put inside of it so what I've been doing is writing out my note whatever on the index card and I have been putting lately a second blank index card in, um, just like if the person, some of the people actually turn around and sign it, which is kind of cool. So then now you got your card and an index card thing signed, which cool, you know, extra thing for nothing. And uh, yeah, I just write my note on it. Sometimes I'll write questions, whatever on the back. Now some I'll use, if I'm writing a little bit longer of a letter, I'll use this bigger index card. And then to get it to fit into the smaller envelopes, I cut off the bottom two lines, otherwise it sticks out. But if you do like, this person I'm gonna try, Aaron Ekblad uh, on the Panthers, if you're doing, this is a four by six picture, you're gonna need to use two of the bigger envelopes because you can see here the picture basically fits perfectly in uh, that envelope. And what I do for that is the exact same thing and I also use the bigger index card because then you don't have to even cut that up. It fits in the envelope perfectly as well. So and you could use a smaller one, but they might miss it, like clanging around in the envelope or whatever. But if you're going to send uh, like four by six like this, uh, I see a lot of people, even if they're sending a card, they use both these. And I do not like the idea of that because they're folding it like three times, kind of, and then sticking this in another one of these longer envelopes. And to me, that's just 100% easier because there's so many bends in it for it to get bent in the mail. I mean, so far, actually, I'm uh, probably going to ruin it now. Uh, I've had pretty good luck. I think uh, I've had two, maybe three, that have had, like, an actual bend in it. Um, some of them come back, like, minor, like, 
corner kind of ding, not bad, but you know, uh, just a little bit. So, so far we've been lucky, but I feel like if you're using something that has a lot of bends in it, especially with the picture, uh, that's just way easier chance of the envelope already bit getting bent, which I mean, there's usually no hope for it because post office, whatever the hell happens at the post office, uh, some of these things are come back crazy beat up, you know? But uh, yeah, you're, I, I'm just saying to minimize like your chance. But uh, yeah, if you're using the picture, I just put one envelope and then I bend it kind of once like this so that hopefully the person puts the picture in over here. Um, I mean, I guess it could slide over to where there'll be a bend and the picture could get bent like that. But, you know, I've also seen where some people put like a piece of cardboard or something in it. But you gotta also be careful if it does, if it's not too flexible, they'll uh, mark it like the 70 cents or sometimes even like a dollar fifty or something like that. So you gotta be careful with that and not getting the envelope too thick because then uh, the person you're sending it to, they're gonna have to like sign off and pay like a dollar fifty just to get your thing. And I'm pretty much guaranteeing you, they're not gonna do that. Uh, they're just gonna return to sender. Uh, actually, the, what happened with Aaron Richards, the first time I sent to her, uh, I did it, oh, I gotta get a bubble mailer, show you how to do that. I sent a bubble mailer with the pen, uh, the Sharpie and card and stuff in it. Apparently, somehow it got the shipping wrong and they sent it back and then there wasn't enough time to send it back out. The end of them filming, which I should have did it early on, earlier on, but we didn't. And luckily, second try, we got them, got her a few months later once they started filming again. But yeah, you wanna make sure everything but you could put the 20 cent extra stamp on it just so you're a little bit safer with that. But yeah, that's the key thing. You wanna keep the thickness down. For this, we're gonna use a small one. All right, so you got your note. Deer, I'm pretty sure you can call him Shohei, or at least I can, because I'm, I'm older than him, right? Um, he was born in 1994, oh my gosh. All right, so I got like five years on him. So Shohei, dear Shohei, uh, you are awesome whatever you want you know it's your uh it's your writing to them if it's a player like now to me i would just kind of write a little generic thing i'm not gonna like uh bull the guy you know be like oh my gosh you're my favorite player ever and stuff like that you could do that if you want to do that go ahead and do it might work might not work you know but uh for me i'd just be like hey man you're a lot of fun to watch and stuff i'd be like i am a marlins fan unfortunately whatever you want to write to them you know it's just not really uh I, at least to my knowledge, there's not a guaranteed way of saying something that the person is going to be like, I'm definitely getting this card signed and getting it back to him. Yeah, just write it like that. You're fun to play and watch play and hopefully have an awesome career. Hopefully I'll be able to get you to get to see you play one day. That's the, that's something I say to a lot of the guys because uh, if they're not in the Marlins or whatever, Cardinals uh, that come down here, I don't really get to see them to play that much. Yeah, you just write that down. Write that on the index card. Now you can do, I've seen people that, I mean, I tried to do no more than two. If I have three different ones, I'll do three, but I don't think I've done more than three. Pretty sure, so yeah. This card, you can see I have it in a sleeve just cause it's like a foil. Take it out of the sleeve. I've seen quite a few people that do this stuff say, don't put it in a sleeve cause there's always a chance the person won't take it like out of the sleeve and just sign the sleeve. So then you have an autograph and on a card sleeve, so you could put that on anything you wanted, I guess. But yeah, typically you want it on the card. I started out doing that just because I didn't really think about it, but uh, I haven't had that happen. So, I mean, that's just a chance that that could happen, that the person signs it on the sleeve. If it's a more, if it is actually like a, I try only do a dollar card, maybe two dollar card, so if it does get lost or whatever, that don't never get it back, it's not really the end of the world, but I have tried some more expensive, like 10, but those, if it's a, more than a couple, few dollars, I'd say, you can go ahead and try and put it in a top loader, but can't do many of these, because once again, that'll start getting the envelope thick and you'll lose out on shipping. I actually am gonna try this to Paige Van Zandt. Uh, hopefully, that would be kind of cool to be back. But uh, yeah, when I, if I do that, I put it in the sleeve. Sometimes I actually won't even put it in the sleeve, I'll just put it in the top loader like that. Can't put it in the sleeve, and if you do, I'd say put it uh, like a little, that's a piece of painter's tape that I folded up into like a tab so that the person to just pull it out like that. 
you're not because sometimes these can be a pain to get out and you want to make this simple as possible for the person so they just take it sign it put it back into uh, your envelope and then get it back to you so yeah you can do that uh, do a top loader if you want up to you but yeah you got your note here written out nice note you got your card whatever it is if you're gonna you can even do a smaller picture like that but uh, yeah I just take it then take the envelope and put it in the envelope do not seal this envelope but actually funny enough I'm at this part kind of a little bit of a spoiler but I haven't opened it yet actually and I actually don't even need to open it because I've seen a few people say this has happened to them and finally it happened to me but uh, yeah with this seal I got this one back came from back from Las Vegas I got it on October 12th haven't opened it yet but I don't actually have to open it because it came back not sealed and actually ironic enough it was one of the ones I wrote remove stickers on like meaning to remove the sticker so somehow this can and the card is in there uh, I haven't looked at it I don't want to look at it yet because I'm trying to say that you kind of see it right there so there's a card in there and the index card so that's pretty fun so there's a chance that could happen and hopefully you get lucky like that but uh, yeah I so you could write like sticker or whatever so they see that to know to peel it but obviously sometimes that doesn't matter so yeah you're just gonna put it like that but what I have been doing is writing note inside here on the top so that you're gonna take it and put it in the bigger envelope like this so that when they kind of open it they'd see like note inside on top of this but I mean they're gonna see this envelope and then you're gonna seal the big envelope with the other envelope in it that make sure it does have a stamp and your address on it seal that up I have been putting a piece of tape on each corner because some of it also go to the dollar store to get your envelopes I don't think it act I did that and had no problems with that so these more expensive kind of envelopes you don't really need in my opinion but um, yeah so that and it's gonna have your address up here in case it gets returned to sender then you get your stuff back and then it's gonna have the person you're sending to address and also a stamp up here and that is good to go and then like I said if you're doing it for a 4x6 picture kind of like that you'd be using two of the bigger envelopes you just fold it up and put it in the one and you're good to go with that so now what if you're doing an 8x10 huh all right so you're going to be wanting to send an 8x10 picture to a person get signed and like stuff like that so basically for this uh, I followed Troy Rudder he has a video on his channel showing how to do this and I pretty much do exactly how he did it so thanks to him for making that video and showing how uh, this went on Amazon as Amazon basics folders things and I'm gonna get the 9 inch by 12 and a half inch for this will be your return envelope and then you're gonna want to get the 10 inch by 13 inch which is the bigger one which is what you're gonna put all your stuff in and then also this stuff these work all right you could probably get a thicker cardboard can't actually show it on the camera but it says max protection magazine boards and these are eight and a half by 11 inches and so they're like acid free and stuff but they're basically just kind of nice white like cardboard essentially all right so you got your picture uh, pictures you could print them out yourself it's hard to do uh, on your own printer I guess if you have a good printer this would be one I bought actually from eBay the picture uh, you could kind of some people like this is Paige Sprintiac golfer yeah Candace Patton uh, TV show the flash and uh, yeah we sent these all out on the same method but I basically for both of these I just went on eBay and found um, someone that has a really nice printer I guess uh, they sell stuff kind of overpriced but yeah I guess there's also some other websites I don't really know the problem that you run into is like Walgreens and stuff you could maybe get I don't know I guess it's kind of just if the person catches it I guess there's like copyright issues with people so you can't really just go on Google and print a picture out of Walgreens from some other person you know so you kind of got to follow with that stuff if they can find a nice picture or something like 
pa actually Paige Sperniak was really hard to find a picture for, of her golfing. There's a few of them, but a lot of them are like her Sports Illustrated bikini issue, and I didn't want to be some creep ass sending her <laughs> pictures of her in a bikini to get signed. So I was like, I need to find a good golfer one because she uh, pretty cool to see golfing. But uh, yeah, uh, you just do that. Uh, I've been getting a couple of them off eBay. And then a couple I've been printing them out myself that don't turn out that well. So, yeah, you kind of get your picture um, instead of an index card, plain piece of copy paper, printer paper, whatever. And I'll write my note out. I do not have the best handwriting. And sometimes I'll also type it. Also with the letters, honestly, I did try an experiment. I think I sent like maybe 20 cards out where I kind of typed out my note on the index card and print it out in like an index card kind of size, put it back. And I only think I got a couple of those back where, I mean, I have sent out way more than that that I've been handwriting. So maybe that kind of balances out because I sent out so many that I've been getting those many back. But I'm honestly gonna say I kind of believe a little bit more in handwriting your kind of note like that. So also if it's an older person, I think it's, a little bit nicer, I would say, for you to type it out. Because I mean, like me, I have horrible handwriting. Um, some people have really good handwriting. I feel like if they're an older person, reading handwriting might be a little bit harder for them, I, I would say, maybe. So typing it wouldn't be a bad idea. But, but like the 8x10s and stuff, um, either or, I guess. I don't really know why it would matter a difference, but because it's like in a big thing, you know. Uh, I'm always just like, uh, I wanted to write this letter out to you, but I didn't want you to need a translator to read my handwriting, so I'm typing a letter to you. Um, hopefully I can make them laugh at my expense like that, of that, like that. But yeah, you're gonna put your note in on top, put your picture, um, this, this is that cardboard thing I was talking about. You put that, and oh, there goes the eight and a half one. You're gonna put the piece of cardboard in there. You could also put two of these, but once again, you don't wanna get this super thick. And I think I've been getting away with putting a $1.50 shipping on each of these envelopes. So you might run into a little bit of trouble and have to pay a little bit more if you make it thicker like that. But yeah, I put the piece of cardboard in there. Take the picture, put it like that. Put the note on. A couple I have been pin it, like pinning it on with uh, to hold it together kind of with a paper clip. Do not do that. Um, going through the mail and stuff, it'll bend and mess up the photo right there. So yeah, don't do that. Uh, I've learned that. But yeah, so you kind of get this and then this. Once again, you're going to write your return address on it. So you're going to write your address up here. Then you're gonna write your address here. And then you could use stamps, but you just gotta do a dollar fifty in stamps. But I've just been going to the post office and using that post office machine thing and printing out like the dollar fifty thing, or I do type in the zip code and stuff, you know, to see how much they tell me, and sometimes I do it if it's a little bit more. I just paid a little bit more and slap that sticker on there, and you're good. So you have your address and stuff on that. And this all is going to go, it's also easier if you put it kind of here at the flap. This all go. oh, that actually fit. I didn't think the picture thing would fit, but the algebra thing. That stuff goes in there. And then seal that up. Also, these things have the sticky already on them, so that's kind of nice. And then here, you're going to write your address up here. Once again, the person you're sending it to is address here and then your postage, stamps, whatever, do that. So that's easy like that. And uh, I mean, I, had a, I think the Juan Soto picture I sent out that I got eight by 10 kind of got bent. So I have been putting two pieces of those cardboard and I don't think I've got one of those back yet. So who knows what happened to those? Maybe not the two pieces because maybe they got the extra postage put on them. But I don't think I've got one back so far that I've put two pieces of cardboard stuff in. So yeah, you wanna be kind of careful with that. Also, what I mentioned before, if you're sending your kind of like some like, example, the Aaron Richards one, this card I think only would've looked good in a silver Sharpie as you can see here. Um, oh, that's another thing I forgot to mention. If you're sending cards and stuff, pick out cards that when signed look nice. So like here, 
This hockey one, you probably could barely tell it's signed. You can kind of see there if I hold it in the light, the Panthers color of their shorts, it sucks. And also the other players in the background have dark clothes on. Um, like Eli Manning one, looks not that bad. Uh, and we could admit, once again, the background's kind of dark and stuff. So that kind of makes it not show up that well. So always, be conscious of the thing you're sending to the person, even the eight by 10 pictures and stuff like that, that there's a good spot for the person to sign on. Does not mean that they're gonna sign on it, but I mean like this Juan Soto one, not bad looking on there. Background blue boards or whatever there kind of takes away from the J in it, but the rest of it looks fine. If you would have signed it up a little higher maybe, uh, who knows, that might've looked a little bit better, but still looks really nice. So that card a little bit easier to sign. It's probably the best of the ones up there that uh, the background, but yeah, like I was saying, Aaron Richards could uh, probably could only sign that in a silver Sharpie. So I sent her a silver Sharpie with it. This is a black Sharpie, but I'm just using it to show. So what I do is one of these bubble mailers that if you buy cards off eBay, these uh, usually use a smaller envelope, same deal. Uh, I put the card in the back and then my note in with that. Uh, you got the return postage, it just still has to be 50 cents, or what I have, what, what I do with Aaron Richards, I actually sent her three cards, and I do this with every card actually that I do send with a marker. I do actually put it in a top loader, because if you know, when you find out, like when you put this in, I'll probably have to do this to that Paige Van Zandt. No, like that card it should, like her shorts kind of make it dark. So maybe I can do it. I am gonna try this. I did see actually some people got it back. Ronda Rousey. Uh, I know she's in wrestling now or whatever, but I think I saw some people got it back. This one's probably gonna be one I'm gonna have to send a silver Sharpie in. The background's really pretty much black because the cage and stuff. I mean, I guess you could maybe sign it across her stomach. But uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna send a silver Sharpie with that. But for this case, this card uh, we're sending a silver Sharpie with. So I put that in the same way. Put that in, and I'm putting it in a top loader because once you put this in the bubble mailer, I mean you could risk it and not put it in the bubble mailer, uh, risk it and not put it in the top loader. But once you put that in there, then I always put the marker. Make sure that's tight. You put that in there, but I put it in the top loader because you can kind of see. The marker is resting on top of it, so if it is a card or something like that, that's going to go through the mail, totally dent and bang up the card. So at least with the top loader, it's a lot more protected. And so far, none of those cards that I've done this with sending have come back damaged in the top loader with that. So that's something to be aware of if you're sending like that. Like the marker could press up against it. Like if it's sitting like that on there. Uh, They'll just like bend around and bend the card and stuff like that. So that's what I've been doing with that. This I'm pretty sure also is like three dollars postage around that because uh, I think the main thing is that it can, like the eight by ten ones and even the regular envelopes could go through like as machinable. And I think when it's non-machinable, it bumps it up like three dollars or something like that. So yeah, but also I man, I wish I had the envelope still. Cause like I said before, I sent to Aaron Richards and it got returned to me for not enough shipping because it was like too thick like that. I swear I had $3 on it, I don't know, you have to look. Post office actually does whatever they want. Uh, I could tell you that it costs like three fifty dollars or whatever like that and then they'll be like, nope, $4 or something like that. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just dependent on whatever person goes through at the post office like that. There's no actual um, for sure way, you know? Uh, but I do know for almost all these that you're sending just like a card or whatever like two cards or whatever in one of these envelope uh, The 50 cent stamp or whatever will just be completely fine for that yeah, One thing I figured I'd show because if you're like me you love Topps Chrome or any of like Topps Chrome. Uh, I think Panini is Prism when they do it But any kind of really shiny looking card like that. I love Topps Chrome, but also, really like getting Topps Chrome signed. So, if you try to send this to a player, even if you're like getting this signed a, like a game or whatever, uh, this is gonna be kind of hard to show. I think I gotta do it vertical. Give it to them, they get it in the mail. That, of course, it's probably not gonna do it because I'm trying to demonstrate it. Kind of see here at the end of it, it bubbled. 
um, here it bubble a little bit, kind of streak, not really streak, yeah, kind of did it there, kind of see, hopefully a little bit better on like his pant leg, kind of, it's like bubbly or whatnot, let me get a card that it's happened to. Okay, I totally knew that was going to happen, that I'm trying to show something that usually happens and it doesn't happen, but uh, these are actually one of the first cards I got back, especially the Pat Neshek one, that was definitely the first one I got back. As you can see, he's a Topps Chrome, and this one's Bowman Chrome, Chance Adams. Pat Neshek, you can definitely tell, hopefully, that it's really bubbled, and because of that, it got, in a, got wiped out in the envelope, so it looks horrible. Not the worst, but you can kind of see here how it like streaked and now there's like bubbles in the autograph and stuff like that. Which also, if I'm, I am sending a Chrome card, I'll almost always send a paper version of that card and you can see the paper. Basically perfect, no streak, bubble or anything like that. So yeah, I usually I'll send a paper card just because of this, if it should bubble that almost always the paper card won't. So, how to make it not bubble? Baby powder. I have seen where some people will use a pencil eraser and just go with pencil eraser and kind of just erase like the whole card kind of like that just to take like some of the gloss or whatever the surface is. But personally, I've tried, I have tried both. I don't know how well the eraser one has worked for me because I kind of just do Baby powder pretty much only, well, yeah, well, basically only now. So you kind of put the baby powder on, take your finger, and just wipe it on. Normally I do the whole card, but for this it's kind of already ruined up there because I did the, the marker there. And just kind of rub it in. So I'm not entirely sure on the science of this, but I'm guessing the baby powder kind of gets into like the pores or whatever the card spontaneous combustion physics happens that it makes the card not as glossy <laughs> or whatever so yeah kind of rub it in this actually gets kind of messy so yeah you kind of well that, yeah obviously there you can kind of see but yeah then i kind of just wipe it off with my thumb that and then I take tissue you can kind of, uh, this, is a card, this is a really bad card to pick it with but you can kind of see the difference also one thing I like that the baby powder does it does kind of lighten up the card I guess because the baby powder is white it kind of makes it a little bit lighter and honestly it'll even on darker cards it'll brighten it up a little bit so to me it, baby powder is the only way to go can do the eraser, I guess, even if you're in a pinch. It's way less messier, I know that. And then I basically just rub down the card, get the baby powder off. Because I'm pretty sure uh, if a person opens up an envelope and white powder comes out of it, they, uh, yeah, you might ha be getting several autographs from like the F by FBI and Homeland Security and stuff like that. So. Make, even on the back of the card, make sure. That's why, that's why I'll like wipe it with my hand a couple times and, and on the corners, edges like that. Uh, basically, yeah, you wanna get as much uh, access, baby powder off that uh, you can get. But like, you don't wanna do the surface too much, just a little bit like that, because then obviously you're wiping off the baby powder. So, now, this should come out Extremely perfect, Ryan Braun. That's my name, that's PJ actually. Actually I did it too quick and it kind of streaked. But you know what, that could happen with them. This is a little bit older of a Sharpie. But as you can maybe see, that did not bubble or anything at all. It did streak a little bit, but like I said, it's a little bit older Sharpie, which is actually something that more than likely will happen to you as the person won't have an amazing Sharpie. So yeah, main thing here, take away, it didn't bubble. Here it bubbled. There it didn't bubble. You can a little bit see it, hopefully a little bit better. But yeah, no bubble, chance atoms, bubble. That is how you get chrome card sign. And also, um, I haven't done it yet to like regular top, like top, like series one, what was this one? 
This is an update. Um, like series one, two, update, those cards. I haven't done yet. I have, what is it? 17, 18 Bowman, like the paper. I haven't had a problem with, but 16 draft. I don't think I have any regular 16 Bowman. 16 draft for sure, I know. Uh, I think even 15 draft. And a couple of the like later year, like years like that, like I'd say like 16, 15, 14, probably. Really know any of the other years. But from the ones I have, uh, for sure 100% 16 draft. Um, you got a baby powder, also the just base cards, like even the ones that aren't chrome. But for 17 and 18, I haven't had a problem with like Gypsy Queen, Heritage, those cards. Though with Panini, regular Donruss, that stuff, I even think Panini Classics is another one. Their cards like that, uh, I would, because a couple of them do feel really glossy. And I think it was the Luke Falk one. Yeah, that was just like a base Panini Donruss football one. That bubbled. So just to be safe, I would say just baby powder all your cards. I, I, but I also want to do it with 17 draft, not draft, 18 Bowman stuff if you're doing those. So I wouldn't worry about those. But yeah, that's all you do. Pretty simple. Make sure you get all the baby powder off. Okay, so hopefully all that helped out. And usually the main thing people ask me for or ask questions about stuff is addresses. And like I said, I mainly use sports card forum, the sportscollector.net has similar addresses, but I'm guessing more so because it's kind of like behind like a paywall kind of thing. Um, they'll also be a lot harder to get addresses that you will probably find anywhere else kind of like that for uh, like sort of house addresses and stuff from players and celebrities kind of deal with that. Also I think uh, for doing kind of celebrities, I think the website Star Tiger, and I believe that one you have to pay. And I haven't used it, so I can't really testify to it, but I think a lot of the people that I've seen do kind of like celebrity stuff that's geared a little bit more towards celebrity kind of style people, uh, like non-sports basically. But if you can't find like the addresses and stuff on like sites like that, kind of have to do some Googling and snooping around, I guess it would be creep assing, uh, trying to find sort of these people. And like one example for me, it's probably, I guess the most interesting one of where I've like had to find. Uh, I don't think I saw anything like kind of like Googling her that anyone actually got anything autographed by her, but Jessica Aguilar, UF, UFC fighter, uh, I couldn't really find an address or anything on her. So I like went on her Twitter and I guess it's kind of like a smoothie kind of health food kind of thing like that or something like that. Uh, go with smoothie kind of store that she started up and it had one location. So I sent it to the store and guess what? She signed it and I think she signed uh, two index cards back. So, I mean, hopefully it was her. Uh, I guess you could send it to uh, like PSA or I think Beckett also does it, but I think mo for the most part, people use PSA to authenticate so that you could like get it authenticated like this. It costs quite a bit of money, but I think there's ways like people have like groups and stuff like that. I haven't done it, so I can't say anything to do it, but I sent this one to PSA myself of Juan Soto. Uh, for this, I was pretty confident that this was authentic because when I, at the time I sent it, um, he was putting out on his Instagram and stuff, which again, Instagram is also a really good way. Uh, I've, it might be a little bit easier to talk to some people on that and be like, hey man, you, you sign stuff and like that. I haven't tried it, but I don't know. Um, I have got guys like to kind of comment back and stuff like that. So uh, maybe there's a chance of that. But yeah, I saw like he'd been signed, like he'd put up videos and stuff of him signing like fan mail and stuff. So I was like, well, this is probably authentic. But of course, second time I sent the Juan Soto, you could kind of, hopefully it's focused. I can't really see the back of the camera from here. Card over here has a different autograph, like JS on it, instead of how he signs the Juan Soto like that. So who knows? I mean, I did send this to the Washington National Stadium and he signed this in a picture and I have seen some other people get him back like this. So who knows, maybe he changed his autograph like that, but like, I mean, he could send this to PSA, but I'm good enough with knowing that uh, this is authentic like that. So, I mean, there is, I guess there isn't a hundred percent sure way to know that these are signed by the people, you know, there's always that chance. Now, like I sent Marcus Mariota card and it came back signed, looks fine and stuff, but it's all from some of the comments on the website and stuff from other people. A lot of people think this is uh, fake. It's like an auto pen machine kind of autograph thing. Uh, I'm not really sure how it works. But yeah, because uh, I mean, it's a perfect autograph. 
So uh, that's a little bit suspect, I guess, but some people figured it out. I don't know if some people thin it to get authenticated and it came back not authentic, you know, so who knows? So I'm guessing it's not real. Another one I remember, uh, I sent it to Kramer Robinson, a Cardinals player. This card came back reeking of perfume. It could have been the envelope and mail lady or something that had a bunch of perfume on, who knows? But uh, to me, that kind of makes it a little suspect that this there's a lot of perfume on this. So. Maybe it was like his girlfriend or wife or sister or something. Could have signed the card like that. So also it got super, I guess the, whoever signed it didn't let it get uh, dry and just put it in the envelope and it kind of messed it up like that. So there's like, it's not 100%, but if you want to be really sure, you can send it to get authenticated by a PSA or whatever like that. But then also, I guess there's always the chance that maybe they missed it and it's not real. So who knows, you know, like that, short of just getting the person to sign it in person like that. I don't know, I've honestly been finding this pretty fun to do. And especially if you can get like a note or something back from the person that you're writing, because a lot of these people, uh, like, I, I mean, I go to a lot of sports games and stuff. A lot of these people, like I was showing in the video, Shohei Otani, I'm probably never gonna see him unless they come to play the Marlins. You're probably not gonna even get close to him in person like that. So there's like no chance of that. Maybe there's a chance to get it through the mail. Probably not. A lot more popular players, people like that, just assume you're not gonna get it back, but it's worth dollar in stamps and dollar or two dollars. You know what? Just give it a try like that. So it's like, who knows? Maybe you get something back. Yeah, I've honestly been finding it kind of fun to do. So I'm gonna keep doing it kind of, I don't know how long or whatever, but all I'm interested in it, it's been pretty fun to do. Kind of starting up, I guess, like an autograph collection like that. Yeah, hopefully it's helped out. Let me know in the comments. If you have any questions like that, let me know. I'll try and help, I guess. Probably won't help out with this person having an address and stuff like that, because I mean, just look it up exactly how I look it up. As always, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching.